GOP civil war on full display yesterday. Reporter asking Kevin McCarthy and Liz Cheney whether they thought it was appropriate for Trump to speak at CPAC. It was quite an exchange. Let's take a listen. Do you believe President Trump should be speaking, or former President Trump should be speaking at CPAC this weekend? Yes, he should. Congresswoman Cheney? Uh, that's up to CPAC. I've, I've been clear in my views about uh, President Trump and, and the extent to which following, the extent to which following January 6th, uh, uh, I don't. I don't believe that he should be playing a role in the future of the party or the country. On that high note. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Well, I mean, pretty crazy right there, Crystal. McCarthy doesn't see, say anything, McCarthy's right? just like, with that note, we're uh, we're out, and we'll see you later. So, look, obviously that garnered a lot of media attention, um, a lot of thoughts on this one, which is, I mean, it's just, it drives me insane, because it's like Cheney's like, we must purge Donald Trump from our party. I'm like, yeah, well, let's start with the Cheney. I was like, then we can get to Trump, too. And it's like, it, it, it drives me insane, because I know exactly where she's coming from and what she's pushing, but at the end of the day, it also demonstrates just like the open and fishers and the problems that they have in the House Republican caucus because Liz Cheney actually I mean on a si- in terms of like silent support apparently got you know 50 to 60 Republicans who came to her defense whenever they were in a closed door meeting right. and there was not an open ballot as in look if it was open they all had to be account for it like there's no way that she would have you know retained her leadership position but keeping it behind closed doors she did and she's very clearly showing she's like I'm not backing down Kevin McCarthy's in a tough spot Steve Scalise apparently McCarthy just like met with one of the lamest politicians. Yeah, that there and is. Steve Scalise is gunning for his job. Apparently, just met with uh, met, just met with Trump down in Mar-a-Lago. He's much more open, you know, to to Trump. And you know, he was on the Sunday shows, and he couldn't even say that Biden legitimately won the election. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, in in a way, like I wish you both the best of luck because yeah. I'm like, this is the uh, <laughs> it's like what the Israelis said in the Iran Iraq War. We wish both sides the best of luck. Right. And you know, you see this, and you're like. I think that you guys both deserve each other, frankly, whenever well, it comes to this. you made a comment. Yeah. I mean, look, on the Democratic Party, there's uh, there's a kind of fight and there's these fissures. And at least they're centered around something real. Mm-hmm. Like, at least there's like a policy For center, now, yeah. you know, that's at the core of some of the Democratic Civil War. The Republican Civil War is about nothing. It's about loyalty to this one person. Yeah. I mean, there's no ideology or policy involved whatsoever. So how can you cheer for it when, look, sometimes, you know, Mitt Romney's on one side. Sometimes he's okay on policy, better than some others. Josh Hawley's on the other side. Sometimes he's okay on policy, better than others. Like, there's no ideological coherence between these two cohorts. The only dividing line is Donald Trump. Yeah. And that's actually the worst thing about Donald Trump is that that's basically what he has done in this entire country. Mm-hmm. He has made it. It so easy, we were talking about this earlier, to make it all about the culture war, all about just which tribe you're in. Are you with the Donald Trump tribe or are you against the Donald Trump tribe? And it becomes the only meaningful division in the country. And look, I believe in a divisive politics, but a politics that's, you know, the bottom versus the top. Yeah. And he makes that completely impossible it it. and renders any sort of policy conversation just like off the table and irrelevant. And so this little soundbite is kind of a it's it's a perfect encapsulation of what he's done to the politics. Like, Liz Cheney is terrible. Awful. They're, like, terrible. Her policy, the what her father, like, that she's carried on. And I'm not just, like, judging her based on her father. She's carried on the legacy of she that. She defends she's it. Still, Go ask her about Iraq. She still yeah. wants to be in Afghanistan right. forever. I mean, it's a horrific ideological view. She happens to be right on Donald Trump. But does that mean I'm going to make her into some sort of a hero? No, of right. course not. It's absurd. And so that's what I hate about this whole thing and there is there's no one worth cheering for in the Republican Party because this is the only divide and neither one of them really deserves to have any sort of power or success in my opinion. This is the future. There you go. Tomorrow in Rising, we've got Colin Rojero, Jonathan Easley, Max Alvarez, Henry Rogers. They'll all be here for Team Rising. That's right. Matt Stoller is going to discuss Facebook's reversal on the news ban in Australia after lawmakers there made a deal with the tech giant. Remember to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of our videos. Don't forget to like and share as well. And we will see you all later. Have a good one, guys.